So hello everybody, we're looking at systems of linear equations today and um, we are going to first just define it. A system of linear equations in two variables, we are looking at them in two variables, x and y. Okay, it's a set of two or more linear equations, kind of like I have pictured here. Okay, right here in the uh, illustration there. Okay, you see example here. X minus Y is equal to negative 5. 1 half X plus Y is equal to 2. There's a set of, of linear equations. Okay, and these guys are just grouped together for some purpose and we'll see more of the purpose when we get into the word problem portion okay um the what we're trying to look at first though is what do these solutions look like okay what do solutions for this look like the solution to a system of linear equations okay if there is even a solution okay is the ordered pair or the xy coordinates that satisfy all the equations in the system. It's got to satisfy not just one equation. So you plug your x and your y in, you're hoping for a true statement, right? Not just for one of the equations, but for both, right? You want true statements, true statements. So you're going to like plug in points twice, okay? So that's how you're going to check your solutions when you begin to solve these systems too. And I'll give you some good examples of that in a bit. Now, if you look over to the left, there's a graph. I have just kind of did a little graph right before I began. Okay, the solution, of course, I said is a set of coordinates, right? X, Y coordinates, an ordered pair that would satisfy all the equations. Graphically, though, what we're going to do is learn to solve these by graphing first. Graphically, it would be the point of intersection. Okay? So graphically, the solution is the point where the lines of a system intersect. Okay? So that would be your, that's when you go to solve. You're going to have an x coordinate and you're going to have a y coordinate. So there's two values you're looking for in solving your systems. So we are tasked with solving this system graphically. Okay, and then once we get a solution that we think would be a good one, that would be correct, we'll go ahead and verify it by checking the solution that we found. So this is also going to be me showing you what, how you can have your own key. So when you go to solve okay. these systems algebraically using your algebra skills, you get your X and your Y, I'll show you how you can check to make sure you got the right answer, okay? So pay attention, this is a good part. So let's go for it and we'll graph the first equation. Now here's a little organization trick for these problems that I think most of you will try, will like. What I like to do, and it doesn't have to be in a different color, I'm just doing that to show you, is I like to put, a, for the first equation, I put a little one with a circle around it and a two with a, sec, you know, with a circle around it for the second equation. And so when I go to do my scratch work, I can kind of tell where, you know, which problem I'm working on or which equation I'm scratch working right now, you know. So it, it helps a little bit. So for y is equal to 2, okay, it, just to show you the uh, xy chart deal with that, this might help you to remember whether this is a horizontal or a vertical line. Just remember this, y is always going to equal 2. So 2, 2, 2, just put a few 2's down there. And here on x, you can just put anything, negative 1, 0, 1, okay? And then plot those points, and it'll, it'll lead you to the right, you know, I guess, line, so to speak. Negative 1, positive 2 is here. 0 left to right, positive 2 is here. And then 1, positive 2. So here are those three points, right? Negative 1, 2, 0, 2, and 1, 2. So it's a horizontal line when y is equal to 2, okay? Again, you don't have to draw it perfectly, but for these, when you're solving graphically, you do want to be pretty close. So let me try to get that a little better. Okay, 
and there we have it. Okay, so now I'm going to get 2x minus y is equal to 4. Here's what I'm going to do for that one. Because I can kind of have, I mean, there's choices. You, all, you guys have lots of choices, okay? Let me go ahead and put 2, a circle around it, and I'm working on 2x minus y is equal to 4. I'm going to use my x and y intercepts. But uh, another thing you could use, and actually might be even better to do this, is to put it into slope intercept form and use your slope as a rise over run. We're going to have to probably do a little combination of those if we don't get a, an intersection just from the intercepts. So let's just get our intercepts, okay? Just for practice too, this is a good review. And while I'm doing this, remember that we do have a, an exam after lecture 10. So this is always good to be reviewing. So to get our x-intercept, we're going to let y equal 0. Let me show you a little trick. What you can do is, with your thumb, this is going to be kind of strange sounding, but get your thumb, and since we are letting, let's put this, we're going to let, for x-intercept, we're going to let y equal 0. Okay, and so what we're going to do is y is going to be 0, you want to put your thumb in your line of sight right there. Cover up y and then think about this. Solve for y in your head. It sounds silly, but it, it works. Okay, so look. Divide by 2 on both sides, right? And so x then would be 2. So then that's the point, what? 2, 0. Okay? So not so bad, right? Okay? So, um... Let's see, now I can uncover my y and rewrite it. That's good though. Glad I got to illustrate that for y'all. All right, so do the same thing for the y intercept. You're going to let x equal 0 in, you know, for that one, right? For y intercept, let's write that down. y intercept, for the ones that are simple to solve, and you can see that it's going to divide nice and evenly, you know, it's, it, do, begin kind of stretching your skills you guys can do that you can do more math in your in your head than you realize so we're gonna let x equal zero so get your thumb out let me make my big thumb and we're gonna let x equal zero which will cancel this whole term out see so now negative y is four okay if you want to write that down and solve it like that that's fine instead of just doing it in your head take the opposite of both sides because we can't have this negative on that y. So y will be negative 4, which gives me what point? 0, negative 4. Okay, so where is that? 0 left to right, down 4. Okay, so this is my y-intercept. Okay, come on, pin. Oh, it's a little rebel. Okay, so down 4, right there. Okay. And so 2, 0 is where? 2 to the right, up and down 0. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and find my slope for this. Okay. Remember we said that I had, I want, I'm hoping you guys saw that part of the video. Um, but the slope for, let me get this back right. Okay. The slope, when you have an equation in standard form, remember this. Let me go write this on the right just to remind you. Okay. When you have standard form, and this is not a very commonly shown skill. Remember, it's AX plus BY is equal to C, right? A, B, and C are integers. Okay. You can get your slope from this little formula I'm going to give you right here the opposite of a over b there you go it's so simple too i don't know why people don't show you that more often but it's quite simple the opposite of a over b if you have correct standard form remember it has to be x term first then y keep things alphabetical okay so what would that give us that would mean that our slope for this line for line two right that's line two for line 2, the slope would be 
the opposite of and really write this like put the opposite in some parentheses and a fraction bar and go in and put 2 and negative 1 then suss out your signs okay that way you can really you'll have all your signs in there that's really watching your signs when you fit into a form I see a lot of people saying there's all these equations there's all these these equations and what to do when you I'm really not so much worried about you memorizing a formula as I am worried about you learning to use them correctly and that involves you making this template using parentheses and putting those subtractions and minuses and pluses put everything in as it's prescribed you know don't read more into an equi into a problem than there is all right so the two negatives are going to make this positive two right so again let's, let's think about this okay if we're going to have rise over run this could be two over one or negative two over negative one right well, let's rise over run until we get an intersection okay so okay let me get a little red dot here for you yeah okay so I'm gonna start if I'm using rise or run you start from a point that's on the line now look if we start at that y-intercept here see I'll put a tiny red dot on it if we start here eventually when we rise to run one rise to run we're gonna get to that other point we also put on the line so if we do that we're doing it correctly we need to keep moving past that though rise to right we get to the good spot okay, rise to run one so here's another point on the line okay right there rise to run one so now we got to the x-intercept let's from there rise to run one and I think we're gonna have our solution rise to run one right there okay so let's fill in this line two this is line two okay all right so what is that point of intersection that's the question so let's go ahead and get that one let's see what is it so we start to find out to figure out what the coordinates of this point are we start at the origin and really here's our path right one two three one two okay so well let me get that back got it okay so from the origin we had to go what to the right one two three units right so that's x coordinate would be three and then we had to go from there up two so the point three two is our solution okay let's check it okay and so we'll check it now by plugging in to both of the uh, equations <clears throat> so here we go let's see let me come right I'll come right over here underneath where the problem was okay right here I'm gonna put that put a little check right here okay to the left corner there bottom corner we're gonna check and let me make it so we can kind of see our equations there we go so we're checking the solution 3 2 so remember that's X Y all right so first we're going to check equation 1 for y is equal to 2 so plug in for y we're gonna plug in a 2 we don't need to plug in an X because there is no X in this equation we just need that 2 is this true or false it's true so it checks right true so it's a solution for equation 1 for it to be a system of the equation I mean excuse me of the system of equations sorry for the system it has to check for both so let's go to equation 2 so for 2x minus y equal to 4 3 2 has to check out all right so let's plug in a 3 where we see an x so 2 times 3 and then a 2 in for y so a 2 in for y now let's simplify this and see what happens we have a 6 minus 4 equal to 4 okay excuse me 6 minus 2 let me fix that sorry y'all okay there we go I got it and it will have 4 equal to 4 which is also true which means what it means that 3 2 is definitely the solution for this system 
okay? And so since, I'm going to reiterate, since 3, 2 checks out for both. equations in the system it is a solution so that's good let's move along okay so let's look at the types of solutions you could come out with for your systems of linear equations the first type of solution you could get is the most typical situation uh, the most typical situations when you have two lines that will intersect at one single point okay and so you can definitely get a single x and y coordinate so for your uh, solution one point is a solution the other would be infinitely many solutions collinear that's when the lines graph one on top of the other and actually it's the same line so uh, there every point on the line is a solution because these two equations share all the points. The third scenario would be when there's no solution and we have maybe two parallel lines, okay? So two parallel lines will never intersect. I'll try to get them kind of parallel looking there. These two lines are going to be parallel. They'll never intersect. They'll never share a point. And that's called inconsistent as well. That's no solution. So that's the note I have down here. When you see you're being asked for the word to point out what a consistent system is, the consistent systems have at least one solution. At least one solution. That's where they may have the single solution in the three scenarios, one solution in our case, or they may have infinitely many. Okay, and then the inconsistent systems are the only ones that you ever would classify as inconsistent would be the parallel lines right the parallel lines that have no solution inconsistent no solution okay so that should help with that and I have a little chart nifty little chart that will help us just to go over it one more time in case it's confusing a little bit sometimes it's a little weird the only one, let's see, the only one that would be inconsistent would be this first scenario I have in this chart here. Right here, no solution would be inconsistent. Okay. And then at least one solution would be consistent. Okay. Consistent. Okay. Now, the other terminology you're, use, you're seeing used <coughs> excuse me, would be dependent and independent. Okay. We say that the lines that are collinear, or coincident is another word for that, but also collinear. Collinear. Um, would also, these guys would be dependent. Dependent meaning one does depend on the other for its points. See, think of it that way. Remember, there are two lines here, right? One's graphed right on top of the other in here, I'm all the way to the right there. Moving towards the left, now I'm kind of working my way to, from right to left here. Intersecting lines here in the middle, they have one point that is the solution, right? But one line does not depend on the other, right? These are two independent lines. Okay. So it's only the consistent systems that you can classify as independent or dependent, by the way. Okay. So, um, yeah, the parallel lines, they're just inconsistent. There's no other terminology applied to that because there's no solutions. Okay. That's basically the deal with this. Okay, three solution types, three possible outcomes. Okay, either you're going to have one solution, um, infinitely many solutions, or zeros, no solutions. Okay, all right, so um, your quiz is basically going to be about this, so um, pay attention on that. Okay, all right, you guys.
talk to you soon. Let me know. I'll I'll put some more examples up, but I wanted to hurry up and get this up for you guys so you can watch this before you try the quiz. All right. And I'll post some more examples soon.